Thanks, everybody. Welcome to Scottsdale. Fairly sunny. It was not as sunny as I wanted this weekend. I kind of selfishly bank on this being a little bit of a pleasure trip, but we got a little, uh, little rain over the weekend, unfortunately, but the sun's starting to peek its way out. So uh, hopefully you get to enjoy some time outside as well. Um, hopefully you got to uh, join us last night for our opening reception. We try to uh, make that as fun time as possible. We had uh, a beer donkey there if you guys didn't get to see it, so you got to uh, experience that. And then our fireworks is always a, a great uh, show as well. Um, we also got a lot of questions about the, uh, the performer. We had uh, Obadiah Parker, who's a really great uh, performer. If you liked his music, you can check him out on Spotify. Um, talk a lot about different uh, media channels, obviously, over the next couple of days here. And uh, my friend Jill Rowley pointed out to me this morning, showing and proving the power of social media, that uh, we actually have a birthday among our, our audience today. So happy birthday to Steve Susina, who's been a, a long time uh, attendee at the conference. We won't, we won't sing, Steve, so don't worry about that. Um, we're really excited about the conference. We've grown another 30% this year. We had over 900 registrants. So you know, I'll walk you through some, some brief history of the conference. We started it six years ago. And we started it as content to conversion. And the idea of content marketing was becoming a new discipline at that time. Um, you know, people were, B2B marketers were having to focus more on that. It was after the uh, expansion of marketing automation systems. So basically now marketers had an engine and they really needed fuel for that engine. They needed campaigns. So our, our concept behind the conference originally was, you know, content needs to be strategic. It needs to work with what you're trying to do with your marketing campaigns. And the conversion aspect for us was, okay, how's it going to work? Are, are, are your audiences going to be engaged with that? How do you use it strategically? Uh, you know, talk a lot about hand raising, and that was the, the early stages of content of, can you put offers out there that will be valuable enough that your audience is going to say, yeah, I want that. And then that's an initial engagement point. The interesting thing for us, though, was, was over time, we were in the first few years we did the conference, just content strategy people were coming primarily. So it was people that were just focused on the messaging. And our, our position with Demand Gen Report was really much more about the campaigns and the outcomes. So after we did it for uh, one or two years, people started saying, oh, this content's really, really good. I should bring my Demand Gen person. So we added a, a dedicated track called the Demand Gen Summit. And every year, that's grown and gotten better. And I think the content has gotten better. And hopefully, you'll see that. Uh, over the next few days. But it's really broadening the concept of to different disciplines of B2B marketing. How do you get that offer right? How do you extend that to use an engagement point? And then what's your strategy for campaigns to use that initial outreach and acquisition to, to walk them through the funnel? So this year, everything is a buzz has been about ABM. You can't go anywhere without hearing about it. Um, you know, there's a huge amount of buzz and noise around it. Uh, we started a publication this year called ABM in Action. And our idea behind that was you know, ABM is not just hype. We really wanted to feature some real live use cases of that. So we've been really excited over the past year. We've done an e-zine. Uh, I think we've done about six or seven issues of it now. And each one of those has real world case studies about B2B practitioners and how they're actually doing ABM, what they had to overcome to do it. Um, so if you haven't seen that yet, I would recommend you check it out. So we're bringing that to life here at the event as well. You'll you have a, great, a dedicated track of really great sessions. You'll hear from other practitioners that have gone down the path of, of ABM, what they've done, how they've uh, selected their account list, how they've messaged to that account list, how they've built a strategy around that. And then finally, we're hearing a lot more from our advisory board and people we talk about is, you know, acquisition is one aspect of marketing, but it's becoming so much more. Now, you know, the, the focus on pipeline is how, how do you not only get an initial uh, lead engaged, but you'll hear a lot over the next couple of days, it's not just about MQLs anymore. So a lot of B2B marketers after marketing automation, the proof point and the success was, hey, look, I got you 500 MQLs this quarter. I got these new names in, so you know, isn't sales excited? Well, really, pipeline is becoming much more disciplined of, OK, well, how many of those closed? Or, or how many of them became real opportunities? So I'm sure you're all seeing this in your world of it's no longer just good enough to say, OK, I got some new names into the, into the funnel, but how are you helping to accelerate that? How are you continuing that relevance? So we have a dedicated track this year called the Sales Impact Summit. That's all about that sales enablement aspect, a sales acceleration, deal acceleration. We've got some great sessions among that. Some of the people I talked to last night at the cocktail party said, oh, I'm trying to decide whether to go to the sales impact summit that looks really good or there's some good ones in ABM. I would recommend we've had tracks over the last couple of years is to mix and match. There is, there's a lot of blurring of the lines. If you're doing ABM, you're not going to stop doing demand gen. So I would really recommend that you find what session you think speaker might be most relevant to you, but feel free to go in between tracks and, and utilize and build your own customized agenda. So again, talking about these four, four different areas, for us, this is now moving under an umbrella brand called B2B Marketing Exchange. And the idea of that, again, because initially we were content to conversion, the event is really becoming much more than that. So we want 
uh, to, to show and, and build a place where you can come get ideas for all these different disciplines. So you'll see more and more that we're going to rebrand the whole event under B2B Marketing Exchange, and there will be, continue to be these dedicated tracks. And as, as the market changes, as new disciplines and needs evolve, hopefully we can continue to evolve our content and, and programming forward around that as well. So related to all these trends that we talked about, I want to talk about you know, content is still a core of what you're going to hear about a lot over the next couple of days. So I want to ask Alicia to share some recent research. We do our content preferences study every year on Demand Gen Report to try to see what kind of behavioral shifts they're having. So uh, Alicia, share with us some of your, your thoughts and what you've seen around that. Yeah, absolutely, Andrew. So um, for those of you who don't know, our content preferences survey is expected to, to drop next month. But we figured we would set the stage a little bit for some of the content and the sessions that we have coming up through the course of the show by spotlighting some of the key trends that came out of the research. So uh, first things first, this is something that we've been seeing over the past few years, this slow, steady transition towards more uh, what I call sim content. So short, interactive, mobile friendly. And this is something that has been grad gradually increasing year over year. And it's something that we saw uh, significantly among our Killer Content Award nominations. So uh, even though a lot of folks submitted really long form, um, you know, more traditional formats like ebooks, research reports, white papers, a lot of the top performing campaigns had derivative content that was more bite-sized, more snackable, and had interactive elements to it to really engage buyers. So that, that's something you're going to be hearing a lot about over the course of the show. Another trend is the shifting expectations around content experiences. Uh, what we're experiencing in our day-to-day -day lives as people, as consumers, we're, we're coming to expect in our professional lives as well. And uh, Netflix, obviously, is something that has had a, a really significant impact on that trend. So you're hearing about Netflix and chill. Now it's content and chill. So what does that mean exactly? Uh, th there are a few key things that we uh, extracted from the research. First thing, um, content organization is becoming a more critical element of the buyer experience. Um, you go to some websites now, a lot of it is organized by product set, solution set. Buyers want it to be more relevant to them. You know, their day-to-day -day lives, their obligations, and even their pain points. So we saw a lot of buyers um, want and expect to have content organized by their business role and even by their industry. Second trend, make content easier to access. Uh, we, we saw a lot of uh, Finney winners this year um, create bundled content experiences um, that can come in many forms, toolkits, content hubs. And um, you know, it really speaks to buyers' need or desire to consume content on their terms, to consume as much or as little content as they want and to be able to access it seamlessly and quickly. Third trend make content easier to consume. Uh, we always try to include questions around gating assets. It seems to be a really hot topic. Should I gate this asset? Should I not gate this asset? And the buyers have spoken. They want elements like one-click access, fewer forms. So again, going back to that bundling content trend, include one form and give them access to a whole toolkit of assets that are focused on a particular trend or topic. And then finally, add some star power. Uh, Leodin's going to be here. He's going to be doing a session dedicated to influencer marketing. It's a really hot trend, um, really new and cutting edge. Some folks are doing it really well. We actually had some Finney winners this year. Um, they had really significant and um, you know, strong results as a result of their influencer campaigns. But it's still new. The best practices are still developing. We're still trying to figure it out. But um, you know, the numbers speak for themselves. The vast majority of buyers today you know, give more credence to content and include those influencers. So um, if this is something that's of interest, I encourage you to uh, check out Lee's session so you can learn more about that. Great. Thank you. So in addition to our content preferences study, we do a lot of research core around demand gen report, what priorities are for, for demand gen performance marketers. I want us, Carol, to share some, some research that we recently did that's looking at some of the shift in, the, in that area as well. Great. Thanks, Andrew. So um, shifting priorities for marketers, I think the only, um, it's that expression, the only thing that's constant is the rate of change for B2B marketers. Um, the good news, we just did our um, demand gen benchmark report uh, survey, um, released it about two weeks ago, and looking at the chart here, the marketers are still prioritizing demand gen, and they're allocating more budget to it, but those budget levels are, are declining. Um, I think that the big takeaway here is there's this greater need for efficiency um, in B2B marketing programs. 
enter the age of attribution and analytics, so 88% um, of the respondents to our survey told us that um, measuring and analyzing their marketing impact is a top priority for them. And they're either actively measuring or planning to do so um, this year. A lot more pressure on, on marketers today. And another interesting finding, um, Pipeline definitely eked out um, uh, MQLs and um, sales accepted leads. And a third of marketers are now moving past MQLs to Pipeline. And a lot of the different ABM, Andrew talked about a little bit, a lot of the different ABM tools, uh, a lot of the different tools that marketers are deploying uh, are here, but um, it's probably not a surprise to anyone in this room that ABM is at the top of that list. And the ABM toolkit, I don't know if you can read along the bottom, but the toolkit is also expanding, and it was interesting. We asked them if they were using the tools and whether they were considered critical, and some of the extremely critical tools were analytics and uh, reporting tools, as well as data augmentation, um, insights and intelligence. Um, so that toolkit is expanding more and more. Um, this is kind of my favorite slide because there was so much discussion for months that um, ABM was going to replace demand gen, but that's clearly not the case. In fact, um, it's more additive to demand gen. And most folks, the majority of marketers, as you can see, are mixing ABM with their demand gen. And just, it's just another strategy that they need. And then I'll pass to Andrew. I did want to mention that um, ABM was such a hot topic this year that we did two things at Demand Gen Report. We, of course, launched ABM in Action and then brought the um, ABM in Action live to the show here. So I do hope you'll have a chance to go to some of those sessions. We have some great practitioners, Sydney Sloan from Alfresco and Bassam Hamdi from Procore, talked to us in the magazine. They were our cover stories. Um, the past few months, and they'll be here to talk to you about their journey today. So, Great. back to you. Yeah, Andrew. I think some of the things that uh, Carol touched on that we're hearing from what we had our advisory board meeting yesterday. We also had a meeting with with some CMOs. Um, so, I, I think the you know the ante is continually being increased. Um, when we used to do these conferences, the idea was we, we were educating you on okay, you need models, you need to be doing lead nurturing. In the beginning, it was you need content, and here's what you need it for. I think you know th that is now there's a tipping point into yeah, that's, that's sort of uh, the, the ante to show up, but now the, there's, uh, expectations are being increased. But now there's a lot more discussion around how can you help me you know, move my, my pipeline? How can you help me close more deals? So I think marketing is not only being expected to, to be looking at the top of the funnel and driving acquisition, but what does it look like in terms of how you're helping uh, sales teams close the deal? We, when we look at, uh, this is from CSO Insights and some of the research that they do, but in terms of you know, the, the focus on engagement, Interesting thing is only a third uh, of the companies they surveyed said that they actually had uh, a dedicated sales enablement team in place. So I think as much as this is becoming an area of focus, it's still kind of up for grabs of who owns it, who's driving it. And I'm sure a lot of you in the room are, are wrestling with, okay, I know sales is asking me for more stuff, but you know, how, do, how do I fit that into what else I'm doing and what does that right stuff look like? Um, and then the other, the other part of it is who owns that, you know, again, from a discipline standpoint, there'll be a couple of sessions in the Sales Impact Summit that'll have interesting looks at that. But, you know, should it go to sales, should it go to sales ops, should, should there be a dedicated sales enablement team, and what's marketing's role in, in, in owning and driving that? I think that's going to be a, a critical uh, evolving area. So a couple of housekeeping reminders that uh, we want to walk through before we uh, get started with the agenda. Yep, absolutely. So Wi-Fi, always a top concern. So we want to make sure that's front and center mm -hmm. for you guys. Network ID, Fairmont underscore meeting, password B2BMX, all caps, so you guys can stay connected. You can get some work done, multitask a little bit in between sessions. And of course, update your social networks. So we encourage you to get social through the course of the event. We already noticed a lot of activity happening on Twitter. Um, so keep that up, share your feedback, ask questions. Um, we have staff members checking our accounts and, and answering them through the course of the event as well. Um, also follow our accounts. Um, and of course, download the app. How many folks have done so already and are mm -hmm. getting acclimated? Awesome, yes. <laughs> um, our our uh, team worked really hard on the app. Uh, I think it's our best one to date. So if you haven't downloaded it yet, um, I encourage you to do so. We'll have live updates um, to the agenda, push notifications about what's going on around the event, 
um, and, and of course some information on our speakers, and most of all, the networking. Um, I, I've been kind of creeping the app a little bit myself, and it's been great to see so many people engaging, um, scheduling meetups, taking pictures, so we really encourage that networking to continue um, and, and really build a community around this event that, that has built up over the past six years. Great, and um, I, we have our map of the marketplace. I think this is also in your program guides, just to know there are, you don't have to sit on the carpet in the hallway looking sad. You can go into the marketplace and charge at the charging stations. Those are new this year. Um, our booths are set up a little bit different and a little bit more uh, ability to kind of weave your way through and all the meals will be in the marketplace, so make sure to um, go over there and get uh, fueled up, get some protein. And of course, visit the folks in the marketplace um, they have some fun stuff going on. Also, make sure you bring your Marketplace Passport with you. You have this uh, opportunity to win some really great prizes that we're giving away. You wanna make sure you go to each booth, get stamped, so that you'll be in the running to win an iPad Pro, which I didn't even know what that was, so I had to Google it yesterday, um, <laughs> along with many other nice prizes, so. And you can't win it either. I know, <laughs> a girl can dream. Um, we also have the B2B M expert bar. We called them uh, tune-ups last year. And these are 15-minute sessions with top experts. They'll be um, at booths 508 and 510, so also in the marketplace. Um, it's a who's who list here. You guys know all these wonderful people. Jill Rowley, Rebecca Lee, Jason Heckel, Jason Stewart, Laura Ramos, the list goes on. Um, if you haven't booked those sessions, and it's a 15-minute session to sit down one-on-one -on -one with that person and talk to them about whatever challenges you're facing, Go to the registration booth and just sign up there. Yeah, all these guys are really accommodating. They're really eager to, to, to meet with folks. So again, as Carol said, if you didn't get one pre-scheduled, try to meet and we'll try to facilitate a meeting uh, here while you're at the event. Um, also last year we did this and, and got a lot of great feedback to it. Um, uh, one of our partners, Quarry, is actually sponsoring this again, uh, Keynote Inks. They're basically visual mm -hmm. notes that will be out in the, the hallway in between um, the general session here and, and the uh, tracks. So as you're walking by, these are great things, take, take photos of them. And then there'll also be a, um, a flip book that'll be created after it that, that you'll be able to go through and, and see these and share them with your team. So great thing to take advantage of. And we thank uh, Corey for helping us out again with that. I'm excited to have Kelly Kingman here again. Um, our team, you know, I'm really excited about our team. Hopefully you'll get to meet a bunch of them over the next couple of days. But uh, our team not only works really hard and not only cares about creating a great event for you, uh, but they generally want to do good. So all the late nights that we're putting in and trying to, to make this a, a, a successful event, make sure our programs and our campaigns are successful, uh, we always try to add some kind of giving back aspect to it. So there's a few cool things we did this year that you taking part in the event have helped us to support and, and create. Um, Erica Goldwater, who's been a, a client and a friend of mine, is actually helping us uh, working with our marketing team this year, so we're excited to have her. And Erica uh, let me know about this uh, program called the Pajama Program. Um, so we started to get involved with it locally in, in New Jersey, but it's, it's for uh, underprivileged kids. And the concept is that you, you actually go to different schools and programs and read to them. And then they realized in, in that process that a lot of these kids, uh, when they talked about you know, going to bed at night and reading a book before they went to bed at night, actually it came up that they actually a lot of them don't even have pajamas. A lot of them didn't even know what it was. So there's this concept where you're basically donating a pair of pajamas and, and books to these, these kids. And it's a program we're really excited about. We're actually going to go do a a reading with our team, mm. but through some of the registration process, we actually are donating, giving back to that. We were able to give over $6,000 to that program. We're excited about that. Thank you. I'll take a little round of applause. Thank you. Also, Alicia touched on our, our content awards, which we've been doing since, since the beginning for six years, and they keep growing. We get more and more nominations every year. Uh, this year, we added a cause marketing category. We're really excited. You'll, you'll see examples of, and you'll hear about the power of video. Our team actually was, was pretty moved by learning about the, seeing the videos for Canines for Warriors. So you'll hear about, they'll they're actually be here at the event. You'll hear more about them. Really great program. Something that I think is, is really easy for us to all think about and give back and as being part of the event, um, we'll be raising money for them as well. So thank you to Carol and Alicia. <laughs> So the one other trend, you know, we talked a lot about shifting priorities. The, the one underpinning to, to all of this is it's harder for you guys to connect with your audience. One of the things that we find is different and one of the feedback we get from our audience is this is about B2B. So when, when you're here, you know, we, when we talk to our speakers, we, we tell them, talk about what's so B2B about it. So talk about your industry. Talk about the complexity of it. Talk about sales cycles. You know, the, the, the shared thing that you have, whether you're in financial services, 
um, technology, if you are a considered purchase and it takes time and there's multiple stakeholders, that's why you're here. You want to learn from how are people addressing that, that complexity? How are you talking to different decision makers and influencers and what are the campaigns that uh, look like? Um, we've had the, the good fortune to work with Tim Reister uh, over the past couple of years from Corporate Visions, and this year we actually got to partner with him on, on some new research, uh, which Tim will be sharing. So I, I talked earlier about um, that it's no longer just about the top of the funnel, and, and what we looked at in the, the research is how are marketers currently talking to people at the top of the funnel versus after they've already uh, become customers? What do you look at that, that the complete life cycle?